Thank you for the invitation to my Yoga Shakti. I'm very Opa. happy and very excited. And please, please share. Sie leise. I'm reading from Vilap Kusumantadi, verse 62. The cooking leader, very beautiful. O Kushali, beautiful, auspicious girl. You are an expert cook. After I washed 
your lotus-like feet, you enter into the kitchen and offer your obeisances to the queen of Ra Raja, Yashoda, and other superiors. When will you drown me in an ocean of bliss by doing this? In this, Swarup Avesh, Sri Dagunata has a vision of his devotional service. And when the vision vanishes, he prays, I, Shari, owe all auspicious Swamini. When will you enter the kitchen after washing your feet and offering your obeisances to Rajeshwari, Yashoda and other superiors? The maidservant changes Srimati's cloth and ornaments and dresses her in cloth that are fit for use in the kitchen. Sri Ragunata clearly perceives this pastime. During visualization, it appears as if it is directly happening. But after the vision subsides, one considers, oh, that wasn't real. It was just a vision. Then, with piteous cries, one prays again. Then, the meditation appears again as if it is directly happening. This way, the Lila Smarana gradually continues. When a sensitive devotee hears and recites this, he will think, Aho, blessed is Sri Dasa Goswami. He was totally free from bodily consciousness when he fell on the bank of Radha Kunda, the crown jewel of Raja. and was blessed with the full vision of the greatly swelling sweetness of the divine couple day and night. Will I ever attain even a single drop of this ocean of Baba by his grace? Sri Kavi Kanapura teaches in Alankara Kaustuba, a Vibhava causes the dormant desires for devotion to awaken in the hearts of the devotees who have similar feelings. Sadaya. Mm -hmm. Although perhaps Sri Dasa Goswami is not able to awaken the listener's emotion to the same extent as his, he is still able to water the seeds in their hearts. Radhe Radhe, <coughs> Dhanavad Pranam, Jai Gurudev, Dhanavad to everyone. <laughs> this is a very, very beautiful point that, um, can you please repeat this, the line before that one? Before, water, before watering the seed. 
Similar feeling, Sen. Yeah. See, Kavi Karnapura teaches in Alankara Kostuba, Vibhava causes the dormant desires for devotion to awaken in the hearts of the devotees who have similar feelings. That is very important. Yeah, that is the point. That that is so important that um, we have the same feelings. Like Baba and Gurudev always say that it is very necessary to fine tune these feelings. This uh, the, what is it? This is the stai bhav that we have this permanent emotion that we love Radhika more than Krishna. That we are Radhika, Radhika sneha. That our love for Swamini surpasses. The love for Krishna. So we should, when we hear all these leelas, like you read now, this wonderful, wonderful cooking leela and all the other leelas and dressing and all these things, it is very important that our heart has the same frequency, the same frequency to receive these leelas, and therefore we should always be in the mood of our Guru given uh, Siddha Deha, always re remember and always think, okay, when I hear this, I don't hear this as Tarun Govinda does, but I hear it with the ears of, of my spiritual form. So we have to find you in this, this uh, similar feeling. You know, before Baba was saying sensitive devotion. So it is all about this wonderful feeling. We can listen to many, many pastimes, but if we are not in the mood, if we are not in the same mood, like he is saying here, it will not, and he is saying, it will not uh, take root in the heart. It will not stay in the heart. It will go away. But we are mancharis and our stai bhav is Pavala Sarati. And we should have this mood when we listen to this wonderful kata, when, to this wonderful pastime. So our job is to always fine tune this similar feeling. Now we are all sitting here, all are aspiring for Manjari Bhav and that is the main thing and the beautiful thing. Wow, so nice. Thank you, Tarunji. Radhe, Radhe. So, Tarun Baba always inspiring. The sensitive devotee like Ananda Das Babaji is writing here. Sensitive is actually, senses are active. Sensitive, sense active. But what kind of senses? This is the big question here. Which senses are active? The material senses or the spiritual senses? So Ananda Das Babaji is gently describing that actually we have to be in our consciousness on the platform of the senses from the spiritual body. So at least we should try and give it a chance, which doesn't mean that it will actually happen in the first time. Like here it's written, Sri Das Goswami is maybe not able to awaken his listeners' emotions. Of course he is able. <laughs> the question is, are we on the same tune? Can we actually get, like Tarun Baba said, the same frequency, the same channel? Maybe we can change the channel and get this, actually. Then we are sensitive. Then we are on the same tune. And then the heart actually can get this vibration and cleaned by that mercy. Because all what is written here, all this information is not an information for the mind, it's an information for the heart, for the soul, and for the body of the soul. It's a bhava deha, emotional body, spiritual emotional body. Jai Shri Rade. Thank you. Jai Shri Rade. So nice that he writes the dormant desires. So 
he is addressing that there is something sleeping inside of the devotee. That he awakens with these beautiful poems and words or waters <laughs> to become awakened. Agree, huh? <laughs> you not agree, Tarun? <laughs> no, 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 no. All good, so all good. The, the word torment is a little. I was talking to Advaita Ji. Torment is. In this, it is, it is meant that, you know, we are all part and parcel of, of Krishna. We are Jiva, we are the Jiva Shakti and it is our nature. It is in our soul that we are, that we are uh, servants. We are Nitya Krishna Das, we are eternal servants of Krishna. But which kind of seva, which kind of service we will attain or we will, we will get. So the, the word dormant, Advaita changed it later on. Dormant means that it was awakened and it fell to sleep. So the English word is the Sanskrit or the Bengali word would be much better. Um, um, not active is better than dormant. It is not active right now because the Bhakti Lata Beach given by Gurudev activates that. So it is not something that is sleeping and then you have to awake it, but it is given. And because we have this nature as eternal servants of the Lord, it is our nature. We are part and parcel of this. Uh, of we are at the energy of Krishna. So this bhakti ladder beach can get into our hearts, and then it can fructify, and it can, like you said, watering. It will be watered, and the seeds will grow and grow. But uh, Guru is giving that seed, so the seed is not there. Guru Dev is giving the seed, and then it goes up. So I totally agree. But the word dormant. I was talking with Advaita Ji. The word dormant is not hundred percent there in the in the Bangla in the Bangla translation. So we should have the original one, because Baba never used the word dormant like in the in the sense of sleeping. I talked with my Gurudev Baba. I talked with him about that, and he said that the Bhakti Lada Beach is given by Gurudev, and it is not already there and and sleeping, but it is the power to receive this Bhakti Lada Beach, which is there in the servants of Krishna, in the Jiva Shakti, like there is the, like there is the field in the nature and the, the farmer puts in the seed in that field and then the flowers and the plants grow. So our heart is a, is a seed like a field, you know, and the seed is going into that heart. So we have this capability and the capacity to receive everything so that is, you know, therefore I was a little, when always this word dormant is coming up, it's kind of a little bit, not 100%. Okay. Yes, Tarun. I repeat a little bit. Although, perhaps... Sri Dasa Goswami is not able to awaken his listeners' emotions to the same extent as his. He is still able to water the seeds in their hearts, making them fit for such desires to fructify in them. So we could say potential is there. Yes, 100%. Jiva Goswami is saying exactly that one. It is a better word. He changed it later on. It is inactive. It is not active. It is activated by the Guru Lata Beach. It is there. The capability and the potential to perform bhakti is always in the Jiva because we are Nitya Sita Krishna. We are all servants of Krishna in whatever rasa we serve. That functionality is there and it, it comes by the Bhakti Lata Beach. So inactive is much better. The more the devotees hear and read the works of Dasa Goswami, the more the seed of their dormant love for God will fructify and grow. This is the effect that Vibhava has on the listener. Radhe, Radhe. 
I think there are anyway two translations. The newer translation, I think I have the newer one. Here it's actually written, the seed of their potential Brema will fructify and grow. Wow. Wow. Exactly, exactly. This is, this is the revised one. Yeah. yeah. I'm reading the older one. No yes. problem. We understand it all correctly. Gurudev is here. We all help each other. It is all, it is all clear. It is, it is not uh, that it, it is unclear that, you know, we can always talk about that. There is no, there is no misunderstanding. It's very clear. It is, it is, Gurudev activates and uh, our, we are all, we all have this po potential in our heart to, to serve Krishna and Radha in one rasa that we, like Rupa Goswami is saying, we have to follow the rasa that we want and we are Manchuris, we are Rupanukas, we are trying to, to become Manchuris. So our field uh, will bring forth that seed which Gurudev has given us. And that is the seed of Manchuri Bhav. And if there is a Gurudev who is giving a seed of Vatsalya Bhav, then that seed will grow in the field. So the heart of the Chiva is like a field and Gurudev is giving the seeds which will fructify in that field. Like when somebody always told me, hey, Tarun, I'm not inspired for Manjari Bhav. I want to play with Krishna and the boys on the field with the cows. So this person, this soul, he has to search out for Gurudev in that same Bhav, in the, in the same mood, Snikta and, Swat and Swatiya. And that Gurudev will give this person the instruction and the bhakti for that rasa. So there is no misunderstanding. All rasas are there and the jiva follows that which Gurudev gives him. That is the mood we want to aspire for and we are very lucky that Mahaprabhu came to give us Pavala Sarati, this wonderful, wonderful mood of the Manjaris. And we have this beautiful cap capacity in our heart Sila Chiva Goswami is saying we have the potential, but not yet the functionality. This is very deep, very deep point. We have the potential, but not yet the functionality. That means there must, someone must come, like you have a room and there is, he, he makes the example, there is a room with electricity. So in the evening, what you have to do, you have to get and you have to make like this. You have to, you put on the light. But you see that the currency and the electricity, it's already there. You just have to switch it on. So that is what Gurudev is doing. He is giving us the Bhakti Lata Beach because the potential is already there. But unless I switch on the switch, it is not functioning. There is no light coming from my, from my lamp on the ceiling. So I have to switch it on. So that is what Gurudev is doing. He switches it on, but it is going more deep because Gurudev is giving us, of course, a very special lamp, so to say. He's giving us the lamp of Manjari Bhav, and this is very, very beautiful. The maidservants came and washed Radha's lotus feet with cold water. They wiped her feet that are very tender, like land lotuses with soft towels. And then this princess sat down with Rohini to cook. You know, sorry if I interrupt again, you know why Baba is always or sometimes is using the word land lotus? Mm. Very deep, that's a very beautiful and very deep meaning. So the land lotus is very lonely because he is standing on the land. The land lotus, they, he is, the land lotus always wants to be immersed in the water. So therefore, he is calling Radhika land lotus because she has not yet, she's not yet together with uh, with Krishna. So the job of the mantra is, is to put this land lotus into the water of the rasa of Krishna. So water and rasa are the same. That if you change rasa to sara, it means lake. So the land lotus has to go into the rasa, into the lake. And that means the association of the Lord. So that is the job the Manjaris have. This is the ambition of the Manjaris. They want that Radha and Krishna are together. So the land lotus is going, should go towards the water, away from the land and towards the water, meaning that she 
is meeting the Lord. Sorry. Wow, that beautiful thing, you. All the sakis hand her the ingredients, and Rai Shekara hands her the ghee. Mother Rohini also blesses Sri Radha as if she is her own daughter, saying, Oh, daughter of mine, you are a very good cook. Cook whatever you like. Hearing Mother Rohini's words, Swamini shyly bows her head down. The Kinkaris change Swamini's regular dress and ornaments for a dress suitable for cooking. Affectionately, Mother Rohini seats Srimati close to the stove on a golden chair covered with a white sheet. The fire is burning on cedar, aloe, and pine wood. And all the ingredients are lying before Swamini, handed to her by a maidservant whenever she needs any. Now, citation from Krishna Bhavan Amrita. Sometimes Swamini checks whether the fire is burning well or not. Sometimes she lifts the lid from the cooking pot to see if the preparation is cooked. Sometimes she adds some spices and sometimes she steers the preparation with a spoon. While she does that, her three-lined belly, breasts, arms and shoulders are moving along and cause her to shine constantly with matchless sweetness. Tulasi says, you Hare, 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 Hare. Um, <laughs> thank you. Please, could we hold in and, and contemplate about this situation? Because it's uh, um, it seems to be a, a really normal situation. Everybody knows, knows the situation, standing in the kitchen and preparing something. And we can really smell this fine fire of pine wood and aloe. And it, it gets a, 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 an intense heat that the ingredients will be exactly hot and um, um, what is this? Uh, um, and and she she is just uh, steering and 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 looking in the pots and so. But what does it mean in spirituality? These this really normal situation. These are perhaps hints for us for meditation. I think it's so so close as if we could sit with her. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, I see that it's I agree with it. Of course, the cooking is the most immediate and simple spiritual experience that anyone has. Anyone, the, even an atheist. That you put together all the absolute material ingredients taken from the earth, taken from the spice cabinet, and there are nothing 
unless we put love into the mix, unless we bring our maybe even very common simple experience of cooking from our heart into the dish, stirring gently, paying attention to the temperature, paying attention to the quantities, all these things that come from the heart, you can put all the ingredients in one place, you will make no tasty food unless there's soul in it. It's the everyday spiritual experience. Also, it is a very great, it is a very, very great um, task for the false ego and for humility. Uh, uh, Gorobani and I, we cook many, many feasts in the in the Heidelberg Temple, and he can agree with me. As soon as you think that you are the doer, very, very not good things will happen. So, so cooking, like you said, Udovaji, is the most intimate cooking, uh, the most intimate seva, because you prepare the food for for Krishna ultimately, and then for his devotees. So this is a very high, high, high seva. Therefore, you have to be very, very clear. So when you and this is a very good exercise in being humble and in being not the doer, because as soon as you think, yeah, I'm such a great cook and I cook so nice and I cook for everyone. How many times, uh, many times, like quite a few times when my mind was like this, the rice burned, I put so much, too much salt in the dal. So as soon as this is a nice practical experience, as soon as you are thinking you are doing it and not Swamini is doing it through you and that you are the channel of her divine instruction or Gurudev to, to, uh, working through you, it will all go to hell. And I had this experience, not, not that often, but quite often that Immediately when you think that you are the doer, cooking is a very immediate as a response to that, that it will, it will immediately, you will see, sometimes offenses take longer to, to get, you know, to get uh, one on the head. But um, in the kitchen, it is very quick that if you are thinking you are proud and you are such a nice cook, it will go very quickly because it's a very high and very intimate seva. So I like this experience that when I'm spaced out, I have to focus very clearly on what I am doing, especially when you are cooking whatever, six, seven, eight, nine preparations, like for example, in the Melas. I remember when we, in, we were in Dole, we cooked for four or five hours, like seven, eight, nine preparations together. You have to be very fixed. You have to be very clear. Otherwise, it's going, everything is going away. So this exercise for, is a good exercise for the ego. Uh, that's what I, I feel also. And cooking, cooking is also a very creatively process. So um, one get inspired. Oh, this ingredient, this would be nice. And sometimes I think I'm not myself feeling this. I'm just lead it to to take this. So it's like it's like painting a picture for me. Yes, yes. And the pleasure you give to others is immediate. This is the yeah. other quality of cooking. Yeah. The, the, the love is immediately transmitted. I'm so happy that we are actually talking about this because this is really art. Yeah. Cooking is art. Yeah. It's like using so many different colors and making a wonderful, nice picture. For yeah. The beloved, for the beloved of Radha. And of course, we just help her to create this picture, like Tarun Baba said. It's such an inspiring process, actually. And in the end, when everybody says, mm, oh, 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 so good, then we know, okay, I was actually helping Radharani and she was successful. Like I was a good channel. I was a good channel, right? That yes. You channeled it nicely then. She was successful. Yeah. Like the, the white sheet on the golden seed. White is actually Chai Shri. She is successful. So on the golden chair, she's sitting on her own bodily uh, color. But she's successful. And we helped her. So that actually makes us also happy. And everyone will be happy. 
like Prabhupada had so much emphasis on very yeah. nicely prepared prasadam. This is actually what I find still the best in my whole process, what I learned in ISKCON. So I love that I could learn how Prabhupada was cooking. Yeah. And the value of it, you know, the value of it, to give it to others. Uh, many, many people, like Udava said, even atheists, they can understand if you nicely offer food, if you nicely offer the boga and prepare it very nicely. Everyone, everyone can understand. There is something very, very different with this kind of eating in parenthesis, you know, this is, this is not normal. This is the love which is flowing through. If you are transparent media, it goes right through you and it goes into the food. And many people, you like, we all thought in the beginning, we have to use a lot of everything, you know, a <laughs> lot of this, a lot of that, tons of spices, you know, but nowadays, uh, if the heart is, is there and if your consciousness is there, even with very simple ingredients, the taste can be so amazing that I experience like that, because, uh, that you reduce all this, you know, all the, uh, uh, you know, the, all these arrangements, you can do very, very nice results with, with simple things. So it's very, very nice. It's a very intimate seva, which is Vandana is reading from the text. So we should go, we should go back to the text, I think, because it goes on and more. But one point I wanted to give a little highlight again. The ghee is handed to Radharani. What is this clarified butter? We know that actually the butter stealer is stealing that clarified butter. Because this means the love actually the devotees have for him. So why it's handed to Radharani, we can understand here. Every ghee should hand it to Radharani and she should prepare something nicely and then it should be handed to Krishna. This is our path. Others try to give this ghee directly to Krishna, but this may be in some kind satisfying, but not that much satisfying. Definitely, Goravani, I totally agree. She is the, the queen and what she will cook, she is cooking directly for Krishna. She is the only and unique cook who can really enchant him. And she is the center of this meditation on this golden chair. And for me, it's like the smell of this wood and it, and it's like a rhythm, like like a choreography, how she's moving and how the uh, manjaris are handing her all what she needs in the right timing to to have the process nicely going on for the cooking. It's very vivid for us, very good to imagine, right? Tulasi says. You are Rasavati, an expert cook or a girl full of spiritual flavor. And now you plunge me into an ocean of bliss, filling up the whole kitchen with spiritual flavor too. What is so spiritually relishable in that kitchen then? Shyama Sundara finished his bath and had himself dressed. And now he sits down in his bhajan kutir to repeat the name of Radha and to meditate on the Radha Mantra. His mother and father had him initiated into Narayana Mantra by Bhaguri Muni, for Gopala's own benefit, Mother Yashoda says, Go, Gopala, 
practice your mantra in your bhajan kutir. Krishna sits down and sings, whose mantra shall I practice? No one in the world can possibly be more qualified than me. I only experience that in Sri Radha. Therefore, he meditates on Sri Radha, his eternally beloved goddess. Sri Pada Prabhudananda Sarasvati writes in Radharasa Sutanidhi, with eyes filled with tears of love, Lord Hari always repeats the two most tasteful syllables Radha and meditates on the spiritual effulgence of her lotus feet like the king of yogis in a temple in a kunja on the bank of the Yamuna. Saki, who told me this name, Radha? Hearing it, I felt my heart was soothed. How much sweetness is there in that name? It filled my ears with nectar. How many names aren't there in Gokula? None of them agitated me like this one. When her form manifests itself in my heart, it is as if I reside in an ocean of nectar. Yadunandana's mind weeps. When I see her, my eyes are fulfilled. Rade, Rade. Yeah. So actually Krishna is meditating in the moment when Radharani is cooking for him. Like we heard from Tarun, Rasa, Sara. What is cooked in water is cooked in Rasa. So when Radharani is preparing different dishes, that means that she is actually in different kind of rasa, cooking the rasa up, boil it, make it right for her beloved. And at this moment, he is meditating on Radharani. What does it mean? Even in this sphere here on the material, we know that if two persons are really connected, if they meditate on another, they can actually feel or um, have a clear picture of what the other person is doing right now. So Krishna is even enjoying that seva of Radharani when she is in the kitchen and he is meditating on her in that moment. I think this is a very uh, interesting meditation of him. Although he is supposed <laughs> to chant the Narayan mantra. <laughs> And because he can feel her love, it's not possible for him to even pronounce her full name. Because the taste of her rasa she is offering to him in every moment is so high that he is always in ecstasy. So he cannot even say da. Ah. 
So it's a constant meditation. Both are meditating on each other. And like this, actually, the mandris should be also always connected with Radharani. So this is actually what we try. In this way, we try to follow Krishna. And try to follow Radha. Also, the, here we can see that sometimes this is what Gurudev always is saying. This is like what human like pastimes are, are actually are. So, Mother, you, you have to imagine Krishna is the supreme personality of Godhead, and Mother Yashoda is so much in Matsalya Bhav, so much in unawareness of that point that she is telling him to meditate and to practice that mantra for protection. I mean, he is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Honestly speaking, he doesn't need any protection, but the, the divine love is so strong in, in Vatsalya Bhav, even that Mata Yashoda really thinks like that, that Krishna has to protect himself by speaking and meditating on mantras to protect himself. So this is also this constant you know, un being unaware in Vrindavan. This only is there in Vrindavan. This complete, this concept can only exist in the sweet realm of Vrindavan. And what to speak of the Manjuris, who are, will never, will never be aware of his supreme, his supreme uh, position. They will order him. They will refuse him. They will tell him, no, you cannot go this and there. So this is this really, really only possibility in Vrindavan, it is not possible elsewhere. It is not possible in Aishwarya Bhav. So we have to fine tune our, our Manjari Bhav to have access to this beautiful, beautiful realm where this is, where the awareness of, of a Supreme Personality of God is not even there because he, he wants to meditate on Radhika and not on, on Narayan for his protection. So this is this very intricacy, intimacy of this beautiful, beautiful human-like Leela in Vrindavan, uh, and we are so fortunate that it's not, not so long ago that Mahaprabhu appeared and brought us everything we have to know to come to, to the utmost limit of that, of that Leela, of that Leela Darshan, you can say, of that experience. I repeat a little bit. Saki. Who told me this name, Radha? Hearing it, I felt my heart was soothed. How much sweetness is there in that name? It filled my ears with nectar. How many names aren't there in Gokula? None of them agitated me like this one. When her form manifests itself in my heart, it is as if I reside in an ocean of nectar. Yadunandana's mind weeps. When I see her, my eyes are fulfilled. No other concert is so fortunate. Krishna can forget everything, but not her. This is the Lord we worship. He is Lila Vilas, a playful enjoyer. The killing of demons and other worldly duties are performed by Lord Vishnu. He performs these duties through Krishna's hands. He is the carefree Dhira Lalita hero, enjoying in every kunja with Sri Radha, playing and playing. He infuses his prema in the trees and vines. He revives 
the old and dry trees and causes the rocks to melt with his flute song. We will not see our worship of the Lord outside of his pastimes. In the Gambira, Sriman Mahaprabhu embraced Sri Sarup Damoda and Sri Ramanadarai and wept. His heart that was burning in the fire of love and separation was soothed by the cooling nectar of suitable songs and verses from Krishna Kanurita, Gita Govinda, <clears throat> Chandi Dasa, and Vidya Pati that were sung to him by Swarup and Rama Rai. Now, from Chaitanya Chait Amrita. Day and night, Mahaprabhu was most blissfully singing and hearing the songs of Chandidasa and Vidyapati, the songs from Ramananda Rai's play, and the verses of Krishna Kanamrita and Sri Gita Govinda together with Swarup Damodar and Ramananda Rai. Maharaja Prata Paruda attained the Lord's mercy by reciting the verses of the Gopi Git to him. The Lord relished this himself and also taught, taught all the devotees of the world that Gopi Janavallava, Sri Govinda, is our worshipable deity. Radhe, Radhe. Radhe. This is actually also hinting that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was giving what he himself was relishing. Actually, this is when he dived into Mandri Bhav. He dived into Mandri Bhav and then he was giving that to us, actually, the highest taste of this rasa. So he himself is relishing him it and he is actually giving it to the world, to every one of us. So we are so lucky. We just need to put out our hands and receive it. And this is actually what Anandadas Babaji also said before in the beginning sensitive. We have to be sensitive. We have to at least have the wish. We don't have to to know how it has to be done. We just have to first see that we want it. Actually, a child doesn't know how to get a bicycle, maybe, because it's too small, but it understands, I want it. So if we just don't understand how to get this mercy, how to get this mandri buff. We can at least have the wish, yes, I want it. And then let's see what will happen by the mercy. So actually we should open our hands because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is actually giving us to everyone. So that's wonderful mercy actually. Thank you for this beautiful picture of the child wanting, wanting. <laughs> While practicing this meditation in his bhajan kutir, Krishna becomes eager to see the object of that contemplation. So he goes to the kitchen. When he peeps through the kitchen window, he sees Srimati cooking there. Aha, such sweetness. 
She does not have her veil on straight, and her dress and ornaments are loosened because of the hard work. Her face shines with reddish glow because of the nearby burning fire. And her cheeks are beautified by pearl-like sweat drops. Shyama cannot move his feet anymore as he beholds the object of his meditation. In such a condition, his eyes are widened of ecstasy from seeing her. Suddenly, Swamini sees Shyama. Out of shyness, she cannot pull her veil on her head straight, and she gives a wink to Tulasi to pull her veil back over her head. Then she chastises Tulasi with a blink of her eyes. Tulasi, didn't you see me? Why didn't you tell me he's watching me? Tulasi replies with her eyes. I also didn't see him. I was absorbed in grinding paste. Actually, Tulasi had seen Krishna before, but our hero had silently requested her not to tell Swamini that he was watching. Radhika's and Shyama's eyes meet, and with her glances, Swamini lets Krishna know, Marohini is here, go now. Krishna asked with his eyes, Will I not see you anymore? Swamini blinks, Yes. Our hero is enchanted by her arrow like glances and thinks, Aha, how much trouble she is taking to cook for me. Her face has gotten reddish glow from being close to the fire. Her maidservants are wiping her face that is adorned with sweat drops. How sweet is this exchange of Radhika's and Madhava's glances. It fills the kitchen up with spiritual flavor and thus makes it a true Rasavati. Sometimes, <clears throat> sometimes as an expansion to this very, very wonderful Leela, um, there is explained that the Anuraga of Swamini, this passionate love, this passionate heat inside her heart is so hot that when she goes near to a cooking fire or to a cooking pot, she is actually cooled off by the fire there. So we know that in Ayurveda, when you are burned, you use honey because the fire extract, extracts the fire. So when Swamini is going near a fire, a heat, so actually she doesn't think, oh my God, this is so hot. Uh, she thinks, oh, this is cooling me off because the heat in her heart is so high that it's already cooling to, to be in front or near a, a cooking stove. So we, we, we can only be amazed at, at this, at this Anuraga in the heart of Swamini. And that like Gorawani said that we are so lucky that we can hear about this that we can think about this and even achieve or attain such a state of of, of consciousness such a state of bhav and i want to go back to this point before that you know the bhakti ladder beach must go inside the heart and there is such a very wonderful point baba is making in one of the explanations of vilabakusa manjali that he says every individual soul is qualified to practice manjari bhav 
So it is not a sectarian thing. It is not an elitist, a snobbist thing. So every living entity, every Jiva soul has the possibility to practice Manjari path. And that is what, <clears throat> what I wanted to say, that it is not predestined who is getting which path. It is not fixed who is getting what. So we are all qualified to attain this Manjari path if we so desire. And how can we desire that? Only by Sadhu Sangha, only by association with those people who have this mood in their heart, which we have. So this is a very, very, very wonderful point that Gauravani said, we have to open up our hands because this is available to everyone. We are, and and no, there is no concern of qualification, learnedness, knowledge, rich, richness. You know, Mahaprabhu gave this uh, Bhava Lasa Radhi Ujvala, this Ujvala Rasa. No? This, he gave this to everyone, regardless of any qualification. So every Jiva soul is a servant of Krishna and every soul can become a Manjari of Swamini if we so desire. And therefore, Rupa Goswami is saying in, in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, you have to choose one, one inhabitant of Braja. And with Sadaka Rupa, you follow them. And with Sita Rupa, you follow them. And so we chose Rupa Goswami as our role model and Rupa Manjari as our role model. Therefore, double Rupa means Rupa Nuka. We follow Rupa. We follow the Rupa Nuka path. And this opens up everything for us Chivas and actually for every Chiva. Jai Shri Rade. There was a question in Anandadas Babaji's comment. What makes this kitchen so rasic? And here actually is the answer, what we read now. The whole kitchen is rasic. Cooked in ghee means cooked in the love of the Brachabasis. Cooked in water means we had we heard already rasa sara in rasa but it goes up like always in every lila it goes more and more up so what actually is here going more high actually swamini is not very well uh, covered by her clothes in that kitchen so this makes krishna very hungry not hungry only on food as we can understand. He is asking, will we not meet it later on with his eyes? And Swamini is nodding with her eyes. Yes, of course we will. But what will then happen? Well, it will go more up, because actually the hint is, her face is reddish, and we know red is her anubhav, is her rati, it's the color of her love, of her wanting to meet and serve her beloved. And this face is glowing red, that shows, yes, I want, I really want to serve you and meet you. And in what form she will, this is shown by the maidservants. Like always, the maidservants are hinting to Krishna. The maidservants are wiping her face that is adorned with sweat drops. And we know there are other Rasika moments where this is like that. So it's a clear hint to her beloved what will happen later. And this makes the hunger of Krishna even rose more. The fire of the kitchen is burning in his heart. So this is real rasa. This kitchen is full of rasa. And like always, it has the goal to give him the feeling 
that he really wants to meet Radharani to the highest extent. That he is really greedy. And this is the mercy of Radharani and this is the mercy of the maidservants in the kitchen. Jai Shri Radhe. And that we can get some picture of that. This is the mercy of Anandadas Babaji and the mercy of Gurudev. That they are opening in our heart these feelings. Make it possible to feel like that. It's not our qualification. It's pure mercy given by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Jai Sri Rade Nitai Go Haribo. So this part is actually taken out in the new version I found out. In the, in the summertime, it is too warm to cook in the kitchen. So Mother Yashoda arranges for Swamini to cook outside on the tree-shaded bank of Pavana Sarova at the base of Nandishwaragiri. Accidentally, Krishna also takes his morning bath there on the bank of the Saruvara. Mother Yashoda gives Swamini full freedom in cooking, but she is present on the other bank of the pond to arrange for Krishna's anguin and dresses. Swamini Whereas the pink silken sari was a deep purple board. She has a strong desire to look at Krishna, to admire his beauty and his funny frolics with his friends. But she is shy and afraid because so many cowherd boys are there along with Mother Yashoda. Somehow, the Yugalaki shore manages to exchange some sweet glances with each other with which they express their desires. Now comes a beautiful song of Sri Haripada. Oh, Rade, how beautiful are your restless feet as they step on the courtyard of Nanda, the king of Raja. They are enchanting the three worlds and they are more lovable than millions of lives. I will wash them with scented water. When you offer your obeisances to the queen of Braja, Mother Yashoda, and all the other superiors, they give you auspicious blessings. And then you enter into the kitchen with your beloved girlfriend. The amazing kitchen is illuminated by your footsteps and pervaded by the fragrance of your beautiful body. All the gopis who are the embodiments of Krishna's blissful desires are sitting down there like a marketplace of moons. Oh, Krishna's beloved, you are very expert in cooking 
the ingredients for Krishna's meal. In boundless bliss, you are cooking four different kinds of sweet rice, knowing that Govinda has different tastes. While those, your eyes, look at the ingredients for cooking, you actually remember Giridhar. When will I see your moon-like face unable to speak a word while your body studded with goose pimples of ecstasy. Oh, Devi, oh, Sukumari, tender girl, then I will arrange a favorable situation for you to meet your beloved. Will I always be immersed in an ocean of bliss by witnessing your clever pastimes? This is the end of verse 62. Can we humbly ask Srila Gurudev to also say something? Is it possible or is he very busy? Please, Gurudev, share with us. Please. We can't hear you, Gurudev. He's talking right now. Ah. Okay. okay. Then maybe somebody explain the marketplace of moons. This in one minute. Yeah, I asked. Ah, okay. Now, now you can ask. Can you share something, Gurudev, today a little bit? Actually, I'm a little disturbed because of this. So you share very nice, and I'm relishing very much. Thank you for this. Today you give me free time. Okay. For next week. Huh? But yes, I'm in, then it's not good to say. I have to come out in my material body to manage something. Okay, Gurudev. I'm sorry. I just I just thought maybe you, you wanted to share something. Sorry. No. Thank you. Thank you, my dear. So the marketplace of moons is a very wonderful poetical embellishment um, because, you know, they say that the effulgence of the faces of the gopis are so beautiful that hardly there are any words in the material language to describe them. So oftentimes the great Rasika poets, they refer to the moon. Mm. And the marketplace of moon means everyone aspires to be the best moon so all of the gopis, they always try to be the most beautiful for the Supreme Lord. So like in the marketplace, there are, everyone wants to sell the best product. So all the gopis who are there for enjoyment of the Lord, they want to be the most beautiful gopi. And so this marketplace of moons means that their sh faces are so shining and so wonderful that it's like, like, like you can see, you just close your eyes and you imagine there is a marketplace full of moons. <laughs> so there is, there is, that means that there are so many moons, so beautiful, and that uh, Rashi Kasera, Krishna, who is the enjoyment, the joyer of all, he has, he had the Kval Dabal, you know, the torment of, what is it in English, the Kval Dabal, um, the torture of choice. Uh, oh. That he, he, he has, he is presented with so much beauty, but he always, Secretly, he always enjoys only one moon. And this is the one for whom he left the Rasa dance. So there can be millions and millions and millions of marketplaces of moons. Krishna will always hanger only for one moon. And this is the moon of Swamini, Jairati. 
This is all Baba's mercy, you know. I'm just sitting here as a puppet. <laughs> Big German puppet. <laughs> Nice words you chose, Vandana. Thank you. Yeah, I was just opening, asking what might please, please give me a verse that is appealing to the hearts of the devotees. And and actually, I remember very well that Sudevi read this uh, already one time, and I found it already then very very beautiful. It's also some. It's also something which is very near and dear to our daily lives. You know, we can read many, many pastimes, and and of course, it is very wonderful to read every pastime of the divine couple. But for me personally, some pastimes are too far there out because I'm here in this material world, and I'm I cannot imagine my long black hair are washing the toilet of of Swamini. So I, this is high. You know, this is very, very high, and it's beautiful. But I always like when there is something because how can I do this? I wear a wig and I go and make it in the in the. This I I cannot practice. You know I can only meditate. But the verse you chose today, you can you can practice because everyone has to eat, everyone has to cook, everyone has to do this. And this is the most like Udawachi said. This is the most simple and most beautiful seva to just go in the kitchen and you just think that you are now the assistant of Swamini and bus finish and then you cook something really wonderfully offer it nicely to the Lord first you offer it to Krishna and then to everyone else and then you have a wonderful wonderful result and it, it's a it's a beautiful seva this is also Raganuga Bhakti par excellence this is how how better can it be because it's it serves both it serves your daily needs and it is a most spiritual affair. It is very, very spiritual. You go into your kitchen, and when I was, when we, I have been living in the temple, it is said that the kitchen is like the altar. So it should be very spotlessly clean. It is a pleasure to clean the kitchen and to to have a very wonderful clean kitchen means that actually you you really take care of of cooking. So kitchen and altar are both the same. So it is a very wonderful daily affair to always, every day, offer something at least once, maybe twice, maybe thrice, according to your capacity to offer to, to Swamini. So sometimes when I'm at school for a long time, I can offer only breakfast. So then the next day you do this, but at least once a day, you offer something very beautifully to your taco cheese. And this is a very simple and a very elevated affair at the same time. I, I have a question. Yes. Thank you. Um, when earlier it was mentioned that um, all the gopis are like a marketplace and that everyone wants to be the most beautiful one, I wondered a little bit, it reminds me very much of the mentality here. And I no. also came to my mind that no. Shirada, they they tell that Shirada, she's full of joy when Krishna wants to enjoy with another gopi. She always helps. So I was wondering if also the gopis are full of joy to see the beauty of the other, of all the other gopis and how much they sure. give joy to Sri Krishna. Mm. That's a very nice question. But first of all, I I said no because... Um, the gopis are not making the market. The gopis are not making themselves, like you said, here in this world. Everyone here in this world is making him or herself beautiful exclusively for her and himself. Some may lie and may say, I do this for my spouse, but principally, everyone in the material world makes, yourself, makes himself or herself beautiful because of your own desire so the gopis and and the, the mantras they make themselves beautiful to please the lord to please someone else so here in this world if you have this and you want to please your spouse or your husband that is nice but in the spiritual world they make themselves beautiful not for their own for their own pleasure but for the pleasure of someone else and you are correct to say that the gopis also they are there is no 
Uh, there is jealousy sometimes. There is some jealousy sometimes, but mainly, like you said, they are very happy if if Krishna enjoys with all all other gopis. But sometimes there might be jealousy. You, you know, everyone has a specific role in the spiritual world. Like like you know, Chandra Bali has a special role. Chatila has a special role. So spiritual jealousy can also be there, but it is mm -hmm. not. It is not to be uh, mistaken for material jealousy. It is not the same. So, of course, there is complete self. The most selfless of them all are the manjaris. That's a fact. The gopis, some, some. You know, sometimes there may, might be a little jealousy between them. Who is in? Who is now with Krishna and who is not with Krishna? But manjaris, they never have this desire to be with Krishna. So, jealousy for them is completely out of the question. So, that that what that is a nice question. But don't worry. This that, this these gopis, they don't. They don't make themselves beautiful for their own benefit. There is nothing. They yeah. even their bodies they give to Krishna. So there is no whiff of selfishness. There is absolute selflessness. Wouldn't it be logic then that the wish, the true wish in the heart of the gopis is not I want to be the most beautiful, not even for him, but may she be the most beautiful to him. This to me would be much higher love. Yes. Like Manjuris. For them, Sri Radha. Oh wow, she is. Yes. This that is a difference. That is a, that is a difference between Sakis and Manjuris. Manjuris would never think like that. Manjuri would think would think like you. Therefore, you are here. Is there any question or any comment of somebody? Please share your feelings and thoughts. You can you can find the like on this question from the lady with Sue Davies, so you can see that, you know, in in Shikshastakam, the last verse, I think the last verse, Mahaprabhu is, is, is completely in the mood of Swamini and she's saying, you can break my heart, you can do like this, you can do like that, I will always, I will always love you. So the most, the absolute zenith, the absolute high point of selflessness, of course, is Swamini. So, so she is the most selfless. She is most happy. She even goes so far. If Krishna wants to enjoy with some other gopi, she is she is even happy in that because she knows that her beloved is happy. So she is the zenith of this selflessness. So then comes logically that those who are closest to Swamini must also be in the highest selflessness. And there are these are the manjaris because the uh, the the, the manjaris are the closest to Swamini of all of them. They are so close that they even have, you know, when you read Bilapakusa Manchari, Rupa Manchari has a bite mark on, on her lips. So Baba is saying some, some interpreted that, uh, that, that Rupa Manchari has been bitten by Krishna. So this is never the case. This is not approved by the Acharyas. The bite marks on the lips of Rupa Manchari are there because she is so one in emotion and path with Swamini that these bite marks which Radhika got on the lips, she, they manifest on the lips of Rupa Manchari. So they are so close together that every emotion Swamini is feeling, they also feel. So when you talk about selflessness and to, to wish for the other, like Jean-Paul Sartre said, being there for others, the Manjaris are the highest examples of them all because their selflessness is unparalleled and because and why because they are the closest to swamini thank you Taru. thank you lovely thank you all for this beautiful sharing thank you for giving me the chance for a reading and i enjoyed it very very much to go deeper into these images of this leader and um, 